Is it better? Better like this? Okay. So um, I'll be talking about uh, Speaks, which is a speech codec that I wrote, and it's used in Voice over IP. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is I'll have a brief introduction to Speaks. Uh, then I'll have um, <clears throat> some uh, detailed explanations of uh, how Speaks work and the kelp uh, algorithm that it uses. That's the only part that will be uh, quite technical. Uh, the rest won't be. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the features in Speaks, how to use Speaks in applications. Uh, I'll have uh, a lot of audio samples. And I'll be talking about some recent development uh, roadmap of what's coming ahead. And then I'll conclude with a bit of uh, advocacy. So first, what is Speaks exactly? Um, so it's, uh, it's an audio codec that has this particularity that it's um, uh, specifically designed for encoding speech and designed for voice over IP, with voice over IP in mind. Uh, it can also be used to compress files within the uh, AUG container, but the uh, main design decisions were made for voice over IP. Um, <clears throat> So it's open source, free software, whatever. It's licensed under the BSD license. Um, the, it's mainly designed to avoid software patents. Uh, I've got a star there because it's not a trivial task to do. Um, basically, I've avoided all the known stuff. Uh, but with software patents, uh, all of those that uh, attended uh, Richard Stallman's talk uh, you see that it, nothing is simple and you never know exactly whether you infringe or not or what, what happens with that. Uh, so this is the current situation, but at least the effort was made to limit the uh, damage of software patents with Speaks. Um, so it's developed within the uh, ziff.org foundation, which is also responsible for the Vorbis audio codec, the Theora video codec, FLAC, and some other ongoing projects. Um, Speaks is now included in most Linux distributions. Um, so as I said, the idea of Speaks is to have an alternative to the closed, expensive, uh, proprietary codecs that exist today. And um, it's based on an old and reliable technology called Kelp, uh, which I'll explain uh, a bit later. So this is just like a brief history of what's been going on. Uh, so prior to about 1875, people have been using a technology known as voice over acoustic waves, which was the only way you could communicate. And um, then we had like uh, analog telephony for a long time. Uh, then telephony moved to uh, digital with new line ALAW, which were the first sort of uh, digital audio codex. Um, then an, uh, the algorithm called Kelp uh, was uh, first presented in 1984. Uh, a bit afterwards, you have a codec that's still used today, even though the quality isn't that good, which is the GSM full rate codec. Uh, so that was 1990. Around 95, some newer codecs arrived um, like G729, G723.1, um, which are like proprietary and really expensive. Uh, following those, there's been a lot more uh, proprietary codecs like this, uh, more like in the race just to be the one that has the patents in the most standard to get as much money as possible, more than just improving on technical grounds. Um, so Speaks was started in response to that in 2002. Um, it's been part of the ziv.org foundation since 2002. And since March 2003, um, the bitstream for Speaks has been frozen with the release of the 1.0 version. Uh, that means that any version you use later than that will be compatible with any other version. Um, even if Speaks itself can change, it remains compatible for the bitstream. So these are the goals and the design decisions 
uh, that were made uh, for Speaks. Um, first one was the, the, the frame size and the overall delay added by the codec has to be small. Uh, this is a requirement for voice over IP. You want to keep latency to a minimum, which is not the case necessarily for uh, when you encode files. Um, the encoding and the decoding must, be, must work with limited resources. Once again, you don't care if it takes an hour to encode a one minute file if it's for just distributing files. You do care for, audio, for voice over IP. Um, it has to be designed so that uh, distortion is minimized uh, when you lose packets because voice over IP, IP is unreliable. You, lose, you tend to lose packets, you have to live with that. Um, it's designed to support narrowband and wideband. Uh, I'll explain what these are uh, a bit later. Uh, designed for multiple bit rates and multiple quality settings. Some people have a lot of bandwidth, some people have less, some want really good quality, some others just want to be able to understand what's being said. Um, yeah, and the idea is to achieve, uh, achieve as good a, a compression as possible by, while still avoiding software patents. Uh, all, that, all those requirements led to choosing Kelp, uh, mainly because it's, it, was already, it has already been proven at both low bit rate and high bit rates. Uh, many of the patents that are related to kelp has expired now, and uh, um, with that, I'm still minimizing. Unlike some other kelp codecs, I'm minimizing the dependency between frames, without uh, going to the extreme. For those who know the ILBC codec, that has like completely independent frames, but it comes with a price that's a bit too much. So kelp still has some dependency, but not too much. Um, so now I'll be talking about CALT specifically. Uh, it means, the acronym means Code Excited Linear Prediction. Uh, it first was presented in 19, uh, 1984, and it's still the most popular speech coding uh, algorithm. Uh, the original version was sort of 100 times slower than real time on a Cray supercomputer. So it w at the time it was presented, it was really nice idea, but it wasn't really practical. Uh, since then, the machines have got faster and people found a lot of ways to cut down on the complexity. So it can now run, uh, pretty much every cell phone now uses some kind of kelp variant. Um, there's a lot of them. Many have uh, patents on them. Um, a lot of those patents are also standard specific. Like in this standard, I will initialize this variable to zero and I have a patent on it. Uh, the main reason for that is uh, when they divide the royalties, they look at the number of patents. It doesn't, they don't care if the patent is trivial, they just divide by the number of patents. Um, so the general idea that I could summarize for kelp is that if you take exactly the right noise, and you filter it carefully, it may eventually sound like speaks, sound like speech. And uh, I'll show a demonstration of that later. Sorry, I'm, I tend to use speaks instead of speech, but. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so in uh, more detail, the main ideas of kelp, first it's to use uh, linear prediction, also known as LPC. Uh, <clears throat> that means <clears throat> instead of encoding one sample directly, you predict what you think that sample would be worth based on the previous samples. So you can save a lot of uh, bit rate there. Um, <clears throat> it uses uh, what's called perceptual weighting of the noise. <clears throat> that means uh, <clears throat> if we minimize the noise in the places where the ear would hear it the most, and we put more noise where you wouldn't really notice it, you can have better quality at lower bit rate. That's used by most uh, audio codecs now. Um, there's the idea of uh, analysis by synthesis. <clears throat> what that means is <clears throat> um, you try to, s the encoder actually simulates a decoder and it optimizes the bit for what the decoder would decode uh, in terms of uh, audio. So it, uh, it tries to minimize the noise based on the decoder. 
Um, and the other idea is the use of vector quantization, which means instead of taking values and quantizing them separately, you take a bunch of them and you assign uh, IDs for a whole bunch of values. So <clears throat> now quickly, what this, uh, this is what speech signals uh, look like. Um, on the top here, I've got a uh, voice sound. Uh, in this case, I think it's the sound ah. And um, in time domain, what it looks like is <clears throat> you see that there are uh, impulses, one impulse there, one impulse there, one, one. And it just gets sort of filtered so it oscillates afterwards. Um, <clears throat> in the frequency domain, what it looks like, I've got a spectrum here. And basically, it's a lot of harmonics one next to each other, regularly spaced and all that. So this is a voiced sound. Uh, at the bottom, I've got an unvoiced sound. In this case, it's the sound S. So what it looks like both in time and frequency, it's just noise. It's basically white noise. Um, so in um, most speech codecs actually use this model to improve the coding of speech. Uh, which is also why it never really works for music if you try encoding with speech or other voice codecs. Um, <clears throat> so this here is what the uh, <clears throat> speech decoder looks like. Um, <clears throat> you start, you receive, basically you receive some bits. Uh, the bits will select some sequences in what is called a fixed codebook. If you receive the zero, zero, you will have this sequence of signal. If you have zero, one, you'll have this one. One, one, you'll have this one, for example. Uh, then you have another codebook, which is called an adaptive codebook. <clears throat> uh, basically, it's um, based on the past of uh, in some kind of memory at the decoder. You transmit an entry in the memory, and <clears throat> you have a signal for the adaptive codebook. You apply some gains to both, uh, both the signals you get there. You obtain something called the excitation, which is um, <clears throat> basically the model of speech. If I say the sound ah or e or o, oh, <clears throat> uh, in all cases, I've got uh, at the bo uh, bottom here, I just have the uh, vocal cords vibrating at a certain rate. And the only difference between all the vowels, for example, is the shape of my vocal tract, <clears throat> which is represented as a filter based on an original excitation. So you have the excitation here, and I transmit, the encoder transmit the filter. <clears throat> the decoder gets it and applies it to the excitation, and you get the final speech there. <clears throat> um, now, what the, what the encoder does, uh, it's very similar to the decoder. <clears throat> All of this part here is the same as the decoder. The only thing it does is it has a decoder. It compares with the signal you're trying to encode. And the difference, which is basically the noise, it gets <clears throat> weighted so that uh, some frequencies of the noise will get amplified, some will get dampened so that the encoder will um, optimize the bits that will go to the fixed codebook, the adaptive codebook, and all the gains. It will optimize so that to reduce the output uh, weighted noise. Um, <clears throat> so here, what it actually looks and sounds like um, <clears throat> if you encode a particular sequence of speech. Um, <clears throat> on the... Uh, <laughs> In here, I have the, the green signal is <clears throat> what is uh, transmitted as a fixed code book for a certain, uh, I think this is like an ah sound. Uh, so basically, it's pretty much noise. You can't figure anything out of that signal, except that it was carefully selected. <clears throat> um, if you look at the signal above, that one is from the adaptive code book that is there. So it's uh, the memory the right memory of the excitation. Um, and by the way, when I said this sounds basically like noise, uh, I have like an audio sample of that. the 
sample. Uh, okay, I'll put the volume up. So this is basically what um, with most of the bits in kelp get allocated to. Um, then what gets reconstructed there after you, you sum both contributions for the fixed and adaptive codebook, you get the, uh, the signal in red, which is quite different from the green one, which would be the ideal if the codec was completely lossless. So it's, quite, it's still quite different between, because the bit rate is quite low. Um, so what, what you get here, uh, I'm going to play the sample corresponding to that. So you start hearing that it sounds a bit better. And after you apply the final, um, <clears throat> the, the final filter that actually helps discriminate between any of the vowels or uh, the, basically the shape of the spectrum, you get the last signal. The Navy attacked the big task force. The hat brim was wide and too droopy. So this is how you can just take noise, filter it, and you get a um, good uh, speech signal. So that's, that was the end of the technical part. Uh, I'll talk more about the um, actual features of speaks, and this, these are sort of the, the basic specs for the codec. Uh, in terms of bit rate, it can do narrow band, which is uh, sampled at 8 kilohertz. That's what gets used in all the telephony stuff at the moment. And uh, that, that can be encoded between uh, about 2 kilobits per second up to 24 kilobits per second. So there's a very wide range of bit rates. Um, Speaks also supports wideband, uh, which has a lot better quality, sampled at 16 kilohertz. And uh, those range from about 4 kilobits per second up to uh, 42 kilobits per second. Um, in terms of latency, uh, latency is quite low, 20, um, 25 milliseconds for narrowband, 29 milliseconds for wideband. Uh, the, frames it's, the frames themselves have uh, 20 seconds, and the rest is a bit of uh, look ahead for the processing. Um, now, <clears throat> some of the features that Speaks have that not all the other codecs have. Uh, the first one is what uh, I call the embedded wideband bitstream. Um, that means that you can take a uh, wideband bitstream, you strip the last few bits, you give it to the narrowband decoder, and it will decode. You take a narrowband stream, you give it to the wideband decoder, it will still decode it. Of course, you won't have the higher frequencies, but you don't need to transcode or anything like that, which is very useful. Um, it can also do variable bitrate if what you're concerned is just maximizing quality with, on average, a certain bit rate, you can do that. Uh, in voice over IP, most of the time it's not that useful unless you have a lot of calls that go through the same path. Um, so you can also do average bit rate, set, set what target bit rate you want, and it will adjust the quality. Uh, and it, can, it also has voice act activity detection and uh, supports this continuous transmission which means if there's silence, it can just stop transmitting at all, and the decoder will generate the background noise so that you think the communication is still alive, and when the talker starts again, then packets flow, uh, the packets start flowing again. <clears throat> uh, these are some, uh, some tips if you want to, um, to have speed support in your application. Uh, the first thing you need to do if you want to support Speaks or have any codec in general is to figure out what your requirements are. Um, that means mainly the quality versus bitrate trade-off. Um, 
you want like really high quality and you're prepared to have like a higher bit rate or is uh, the channel the channel capable of only 10 kilobits per second so the bit rate has to be less than that so you need to figure that one out first uh, <clears throat> my advice is to start from sample code that can already do encoding and decoding of speaks uh, the speaks manual has uh, sample encoders and decoders which are rather simple to understand um, if you're interested in files there's uh, the reference encoder and decoder that put everything in AUG the right way. So it's a lot better to start from there instead of just writing code and then figure it out when, why it doesn't work. Um, then one very important thing is to make sure that you actually send speaks the right input. Uh, that means you sending the right format and the right sample rate and the right <laughs> block size of the API um, expects. I've seen so many people sending MULA to speaks, whereas it requires uh, linear 16-bit samples and then wondering why is the sound really crap. Um, this is, that explains most of the problems using speaks. Um, another thing uh, that happens sometimes is some cheap sound cards sometimes have a DC offset which means that the values aren't centered at zero, but for example, centered at some pretty high value. Uh, this is something that most speech codecs don't like and it tends to perform rather poorly. Um, of course, also a good thing to do is to use the right, um, the right gains for the signals, uh, not having some clipping on the input because then the output will have clipping too, not having like the input so small that the uh, the noise is uh, fairly high in the input at the beginning. Um, <clears throat> very important, just listen to what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes I've had uh, messages on the mailing list. I, I encode this and when I decode it, it's crap. And then I ask, well, how's the input? And they say, well, I don't know. I haven't listened to it. So this tends to be important. If you're sending crap, this is what you're going to get at the output. Um, <clears throat> so listen to the input, listen to the decoded, uh, use the uh, speaks ang, speaks deck encoders and decoder, compare with that. If you're getting something different from the same bit rate, then most likely you did something wrong. Um, and the last bit is to, uh, <clears throat> at, when you're doing voice over IP, it's very important at the decoder that you uh, call the right functions and speak to handle packet loss. Because if you lose packets, it's fine. Speaks can handle it as long as you tell it that you lost a packet instead of just putting zeros. So that's something important. <clears throat> so I've got some uh, speech samples here to give you an idea of what the quality is like. So, um, just uh, before that, uh, so th these are, samples are for narrowband. Um, at 8 kilohertz, uh, what I recommend as the, as the bit rates you should use is mainly 8, 11, or 15 kilobits. You could go below or above, but these are the most useful for voice over IP. So, here if I, I'm going to play the original file. The Navy attacked the big task force. The hat brim was wide and too droopy. And um, at 15, at 15 uh, kilobits per second, this is what it sounds like. The Navy attacked the big task force. The hat brim was wide and too droopy. Then at uh, 8 kilobits per second. The Navy attacked the big task force. The hat brim was wide and too droopy. Some may notice a slight degradation, but the quality is still quite acceptable. In four kilobits per second, you obtain this. The Navy attacked the big task force. The hat brim was wide and too droopy. So at four kilobits, you start hearing quite a bit of noise, but in some cases, it's still useful. Um, so in terms of uh, what Speaks does compared to other codecs, uh, I 
have here uh, some MOS, MOS cores that aren't, it's not a real MOS test, it was done using the tool called PESQ. And um, you have here, this is the quality, this is the bit rate. So the idea is to get as close to this corner as possible. Um, in red, you have what the uh, reference Peaks implementation has. Uh, in green, it's an experimental version that has slightly better quality. Um, now, if you look at other codecs, um, all the, the ones in magenta there, these are the only uh, codecs that you can use. Before Speaks, these were the only codecs that you could use in free software. Uh, this one here is GSM, which you can see is fairly worse than Speaks. It's, uh, the quality is just slightly better than Speaks at six kilobits, except the GSM is like 13 kilobits. Uh, these are ADPCM uh, codecs. This is G721, uh, G711, which is MULA or ALAW. And uh, now compared to proprietary codecs, it fares better than uh, this one, which is G728. Uh, you've got ILBC there, which uh, is uh, also worse than, uh, than speaks in most conditions. Um, the only codecs on this side are uh, G729 and AMR Narban. Um, they're only slightly better, so the idea with Speaks was that you're pretty close to that, except that you don't need like to pay very expensive royalties uh, for the codec. Now, I've got this graph too in tr for um, <clears throat> uh, the complexity of Speaks. Uh, here, what I have on the, this axis is basically how much faster than real time uh, it is, or in other words, how many channels you could do on uh, at the same time in a given CPU. Uh, <clears throat> so you see that generally the uh, the the cost goes up as the, or the the speed goes down as the bit rate increases, but uh, you can still do around, uh, in the order of the 100, uh, 100 times faster than real time in most of the narrow band modes, which is pretty much enough for most, uh, most uses, uh, unless you're doing like 200 channels at a time on the same machine, then you need a very powerful one or something like that. <clears throat> now, um, I'll have some uh, samples for um, use of speaks for wideband. Um, wideband means 16 kilohertz sampling rate. You have a lot more uh, frequencies available. Um, so I think voice uh, wideband is really important for voice over IP because that's the only way you can actually have better quality than the regular phone service. So instead of saying, well, use voice over IP, the quality is almost as good, but you know it's cheaper and stuff. You can say like, actually, not only is it cheaper, but I can have a lot better quality. So I think uh, things should be moving there. Uh, the bit rate is a bit higher, but it's not still not that expensive if you consider that just sending the IP packets over with RTP in it and UDP, uh, the overhead is already 16 kilobits per second. So you might as well transmit good, good quality audio with that. Um, so with speaks, the uh, narrowband and wideband are compatible. So if one side doesn't support wideband, it's easy to convert between the two. Um, and uh, with speaks, the bit rates that I recommend for wideband are the ones that are between 12.8 kilobits per second up to um, 20, 27.8 kilobits per second. This is what I generally recommend, although you can go outside of that. So these are the samples that I have. The original is this one. This is an example of Speaks, an audio compression codec specifically tuned for the reproduction of human speech. Now, if I code this at 27.8 kilohertz, uh, kilobits per second. This is an example of Speaks, an audio compression codec specifically tuned for the reproduction of human speech. So you'll have a hard time uh, hearing the noise at that rate. I've got the 20 kilobits per second. This is an example of Speaks, 
an audio compression codec specifically tuned for the reproduction of human speech. So this is still fairly good quality. If you go down to 12.8, you can start hearing some noise, but it's not too bad. This is an example of Speaks, an audio compression codec specifically tuned for the reproduction of human speech. And now I'm going to play the same thing, but in narrowband at 15 kilobits. 15 kilobits per second, and you'll see why I say use wideband. This is an example of Speaks, an audio compression codec specifically tuned for the reproduction of human speech. This is actually higher bit rate than the one I uh, played just before, yet the quality is not as good because it's only narrowband and about half the spectrum is missing. Um, now, when I was talking about packet loss, uh, this is just a quick demo to see how important it is. Um, the first sample that I'll play is if you basically don't handle packet loss, you put zeros when you don't receive the packet and then you decode the next packet. Um, this is the result you obtain. This is with 15% 50 per, 15 packet loss. This is an example of Speaks, an audio compression codec specifically tuned for the reproduction of human speech. So this is with zeros, and if you actually handle packet loss correctly with just by calling speaks properly, you obtain this instead. This is an example of speaks, an audio compression codec specifically tuned for the reproduction of human speech. So even with uh, even with fifteen percent packet loss, you can still have quite acceptable uh, quite acceptable quality if you do things properly. Um, so in wideband, I have this uh, same graph to compare um, the two speaks version that I have with uh, which is what is currently pretty much the only one, the only modern uh, proprietary wideband codec, which is AMR wideband. And you can see that for everything except the very low bit rates, speech I, speaks actually fares pretty well compared to that one. And is actually even better quality because you can crank the bit rate up and uh, have pretty much transparent quality for speech. Uh, for speech. Sorry. Um, now these are some of the recent development uh, with Speaks. Uh, so as I said, um, although the bit stream has been frozen for a while, uh, development is still quite active. Uh, in terms of adding features, uh, it's even possible to uh, improve the quality in some cases without touching the bitstream at all. Um, some of the improvements uh, that have happened recently, um, first one is what I call the preprocessor, something that you can run on the, on the audio before running the encoder. Um, what the preprocessor can do, first thing is noise suppression. If you have uh, some background noise, you run the preprocessor on it, and it can sub any noise that is constant in time, it can com remove most of it, so that when you encode, you encode something that doesn't have noise, so obviously the quality is better at the end. Um, it has uh, automatic gain control that you can apply to the signal. Um, it's got an improved voice over, acti voice over uh, sorry, voice activity detection algorithm that uh, is more accurate than the one in the main codec. Uh, in some cases, it's useful. Um, I also have an uh, acoustic echo canceller. Um, that's uh, something you need if you want to have uh, a hands-free phone and not hear yourself uh, as egg as the uh, as your voice goes out of the speakers at the other end, back in the microphone, and hear yourself, so you can cancel the echo with that. Um, and uh, the last one is that uh, speaks is being converted to fixed point. Uh, all the narrowband stuff is converted completely. The wideband stuff has a little more to do, but I'll have it in the next slide. Uh, so um, here, so. Um, Speaks is made so that just as a compile option, you can make it use only integer uh, arithmetic. 
instead of uh, floating point. That's very useful on embedded devices or anything that doesn't have an FPU. Um, it, the only assumptions made by the fixed point is that you have a 32-bit accumulator and a 16-bit multiplier. So the, everything goes down to multiplying two 16-bit values to have a 32-bit one and adding to other 32-bit values. That's the only thing that's required. Uh, there's no requirement for hardware saturation. Uh, many, most of the DSPs have uh, hardware saturation, but not, uh, not CPUs like ARM and stuff. So Speaks doesn't assume that. Um, and uh, the quality of the um, quality of the fixed point version is very close to the one of the floating point version, which is the idea. Um, so some things are fully implemented in fixed point now. Um, all the constant bit rate modes uh, between six and eighteen kilobits per second. Yep. Okay, so the question is, what I mean by the, the, the quality is close to the float version, whether it's the quality of the encoder or the decoder, and the answer is both. Um, if you do the whole, uh, you encode in fixed point, decode in float, do the opposite, or basically any combination will have pretty much the same kind of quality. And obviously the bit, frame, the bit stream is the same. And even the API and ABI of the libraries are the same. You can just substitute in the, a shared library compiled for fixed point or floating point, and it works exactly the same. Um, yeah, so the ones that are fully implemented in fixed point, the, between 6 and 18 kilobits in narrowband, that's fully converted. Um, the echo canceller has very recently been converted to fixed point. Um, some parts are only partially implemented. Uh, that means most operations are converted to fixed point, but there are still a few float operations left that need to be emulated, and in most cases, there's so few that it still can run in real time. Um, so all the other narrowband bit rates that aren't fully implemented are almost complete, so you can still use them on an ARM chip, for example. Uh, the wideband is almost completed. And the only one that's really not implemented in fixed point at all is the preprocessor so far. <laughs> so you can't have the noise suppression running on an ARM chip. Now, in terms of um, speaks in the embedded world, um, it's been mainly working on three architectures that I know of. There might be other ones that can use it. Um, so the first one is the ARM, ARM architecture. Uh, Speaks has actually some uh, assembly optimizations for both the V4 and V5e architectures. Um, so um, it can run pretty fast in the ARM chips. Uh, and it can be used, I've used it before with uh, Linux and GCC. Um, another embedded chip is the um, Analog Devices Blackfin DSP. Uh, that one also has uh, assembly optimizations for it. Um, the interesting thing about it is uh, it has a completely free development kit that goes with it. You can uh, <coughs> buy very cheaply a uh, development board that ac that's actually released. The schematics of the board is actually GPL, and you can run Muse Linux on it with uh, GCC. Uh, Linphone has been ported to it, so you have a complete voice over IP kit for that chip. <clears throat> and uh, so this is the URL where you can uh, get all the information uh, and even like buy the board, which is called a stamp board. Um, so and the last DSP is the Texas Instruments uh, C54, C55, and C6000. Um, Speaks is known to work on these chips, although I've never tested it. Uh, unfortunately, also, there's no free operating system or development tools that I know of that work for these chips. Um, uh, 
the question is, is it that DSP that's used in the latest Nokia 7 something? Um, I think if I understood correctly that the chip, yeah, okay, good. I think that device actually has an ARM plus uh, takes a C5, I'm sorry? Okay, so just to repeat, it's a dual, dual core ARM plus C55. So Speaks would definitely run on that. It could run on either the ARM part or the C55. Uh, the C54 is actually not recommended for now because the standard TI compiler tends to generate stupid things like calling functions for every, every multiplication, which is probably not what you want, and it tends to run really slow on that. So until that is sort of fixed, it's not really recommended. Uh, now, where, where this is going at the moment, uh, what's currently in progress is uh, there is an uh, speaks over RTP draft, the IETF, so we're pushing that one and standardizing uh, speaks for use in RTP, SIP, and all that. Um, the porting to fixed point is uh, still ongoing and will continue until everything has been converted to fixed point. And um, you saw some curves with uh, speaks in red and green. Uh, the green one was actually speaks using the Vorbis psychoacoustic model to shape noise better than uh, what it does by default. So. It's, uh, it's not cheap, it's more, uh, more compu computationally intensive, but you can get better quality with that. And it's still ongoing that I'm trying to increase the quality using that. Um, now, some possible improvements that, um, that could be done in case there's any volunteer that wants to do some uh, speak stuff. Um, one thing that can be done is uh, there's a, still quite a bit of tuning that's possible. Uh, a lot of things that could be improved by just tweaking a few values to optimize some things. Um, there's also a possibility for those who know some signal processing to improve the voice over activity detection, uh, the variable bit rate code, uh, perceptual, <coughs> perceptual enhancement and all that can still be improved without, again, changing the bitstream. And um, also in the future, and that's not related to speaks directly, but uh, <clears throat> we've got a project that's still in its, in its infancy that um, ideally we'd, we'd like to have the high, very high quality uh, real-time audio codec that would fill in the gaps between uh, Vorbis and speaks. Uh, the reason being that Vorbis has fairly high quality but fairly high latency. Speaks has uh, low latency, but the quality uh, isn't as good as Vorbis, for example, for music and things like that. Vorbis has much better quality, so the idea would be to combine both together. So this is um, some other things we're going to be working on some in the future years. And uh, in conclusion, um, so this is why you really should use Speaks if you're not already using it in voice over IP. Um, first reason is open source, I don't think, or free software. I don't think I need to convince anyone here that it's a good thing. Uh, basically it means no cost, you, get, you don't get locked with, in with the vendor from some codec. Um, because it's open source, the codec is still evolving and it will get better. Um, and it's also the only way, even if you have a proprietary, um, <clears throat> a proprietary voice over IP application, if you want to be compatible with free software applications, you need to use, uh, you need to be able to understand free codecs, because obviously free software can't use proprietary codecs. Um, another another good reason is, uh, speaks can do. Uh, a lot of things and a lot more things than most of the proprietary codecs. Uh, it's one of the few codecs that can actually do narrowband and wideband, uh, unlike most codecs that do like narrowband at this bit rate, and if you want another bit rate, you can need to get another codec, and that gets complicated. So Speaks does pretty much everything, 
It covers a very wide range of bit rate uh, between two kilobits per second to 44 kilobits per second. This is more than any speech codec that I know of by a wide margin. Uh, it's very flexible. You can tweak a lot of things with the library. You can even tell it if you want to um, <coughs> optimize for uh, CPU time or optimize for quality and things like that. There's a lot of things you can change. Um, and it's basically easy to use. The libspeaks library has a clean uh, and simple API. Uh, and of course, there's some community support. Uh, if you have questions, you can uh, ask on the mailing list. Um, there's also an RC channel, hash speaks, and the website, which is sort of below the screen, uh, www.speaks.org. And um, that concludes my talk with these are some of the software that supports Speaks right now only, only have free software there. Uh, there are more, I'm sorry for all of the ones that I forgot in this list. So is there any question? Yes? Uh, so the question is, what's the adoption for SIP phone manufacturers? Um, in terms uh, of support in in soft phones, a lot, most of the free soft phones supported at the moment. In terms of hard phones, um, I'm not aware of phones that support it now, uh, although I think it is coming now. The, the fixed point port is relatively recent, and ever since it happens, I see a lot of, um, there's, a, there's been a lot of activity on the mailing list about uh, people implementing speaks on all kinds of DSPs. I don't know all the companies they're working for, but I would expect to see several hard phones coming in in the near future. Yes? Uh, I'm sorry, can, can, can you repeat again? I, I can't hear. The question is, if I'm trying to standardize the RTP profile for Speaks? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is, there's currently a draft at the IETF for specifying how to use Speaks on RTP. I'm sorry, I... Oh, okay. <clears throat> there isn't that much that happened uh, recently, mostly because of lack of time and uh, my lack of knowledge of RTP in general. Uh, if anyone would like to help on that one, I'm really open to changing stuff. Uh, it hasn't changed much, and I wouldn't expect it to change all that much until it becomes an, R an RFC, by the way. But uh, if you have any comments or you want to help, I'm definitely open uh, to that. Yes? Okay, so the question is basically what's the difference between uh, acoustic echo canceller and line echo canceller and can we use the Speaks echo canceller for line echo cancellation? And um, basically the main difference is that uh, acoustic echo cancellation is a much harder problem and the filter length is usually longer. So even though I haven't really tested it, the um, acoustic echo canceller in Speaks can most likely be used to cancel line echo. It's, uh, it's just simpler. The algorithm that I'm using in Speaks is different than the NLMS algorithm, which is usually used for line echo. Uh, the one I have in Speaks is usually faster. The, only, the main difference, uh, for example, we're trying to, uh, I'm trying to work with Mark Spencer to 
uh, use the speaks echo canceler and asterisk to cancel line echo. Uh, the main thing that needs to be solved at the moment is the fact that the speaks echo canceler works on blocks. Uh, usually it, is, it expects like a 10 millisecond or 20 millisecond block, cancel the echo for that block. It doesn't work on a sample by sample basis. That's the main difference. Any other question? Yes? Uh, how speak, the question is how speaks compares to the um, the codec used in Skype. Uh, I'm not that familiar with Skype. I think it uses uh, ILBC and ISAC. Um, the ILBC is the narrowband codec, which I have in this slide. Yeah, the, the, I think they're using both anyway. So the, the, the narrowband version is the one in Cyan here, is ILBC. So Speaks is actually better for the same kind of bitrate. The wideband one is I, ISAC. Um, I'm not familiar with it. I couldn't, I couldn't find it when doing my wideband comparisons. Um, <clears throat> but I would expect, I th uh, does anyone know what bitrate it's using? The wideband one, okay. Um, but I would expect speaks to fare pretty well compared to that one too, uh, considering that uh, it already goes pretty well against uh, AMR wideband. But I don't have exact comparisons. The, the question is if it's possible to. I'm not sure I understood the question anyway. If asterisk support. Oh, okay. If I know what? Yeah. So the question is transcoding from G711 MULA to Speaks. Uh, I haven't done some, any formal testing with that, but I would assume you would get roughly the same quality as these here, which are uh, from linear 16-bit. Um, MULA has a slight degradation, but I don't think it's <coughs> that major. Probably in the same uh, same kind of degradation that you have for other codecs when you transcode from MULA. Any other question? Well, thanks very much. <laughs>